the Supreme Court with some supreme problems. Chief Justice John Roberts saying thanks but no thanks to Congress, turning down an, quote, invitation from the Judiciary Committee Chairman Dick Durbin to testify at a hearing on ethics rules. The invite follows his fellow Justice Clarence Thomas coming under scrutiny for accepting previously undisclosed trips and gifts from GOP mega donor Harlan Crow. Now, a new report from The Intercept says Crow may have brought, excuse me, bought citizenship to an island nation in order to avoid paying taxes. Meanwhile, The Guardian is reporting that the 2018 Senate an investigation into then Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh may have contained some serious omissions. That was those were the words. The Republican-led Judiciary Committee stated at the time there was no evidence to any of the claims of sexual assault against Brett Kavanaugh. Joining me now to help us break it all down is Ellie Mistal, justice correspondent for The Nation and author of Allow Me to Retort. Ellie, I tweeted out, it's Ellie. That's the tweet. I stand by it. We're never going to have enough time to get to everything, so let's just go for it now. In a piece for the nation, you describe the situation of the high court as ethical rot oozing from the Republican-controlled Supreme Court. Is this really boiling down to the super conservative majority on the highest court of the land not wanting to cede any ground to external oversight? I think it comes down to nine people who believe themselves to be above the law and better than the rest of us simply not willing to submit to basic independent ethical oversight. I actually don't think that this is a liberal conservative thing. It happens to be the conservatives right now that are most obviously on the take. But the larger issue here is the way that the Supreme Court has always operated in secret and thinks that thinks that it's entitled to and thinks that thinks that it is above the law. And that's what needs to be stopped, and that's what needs to be stopped by Congress. These people are not gods. They're not kings. They're not rulers. They work for us. And at some point, it is, re it is, it is, it is reasonable to expect these people to submit to the same ethical requirements that would apply to a traffic court judge in Peoria. So, Ellie, let's talk about Chief Justice Roberts turning down that invitation to appear for an ethics hearing. Let's talk about the logistics of it, though. How realistic is the idea of serving a subpoena on someone like John Roberts? Where's the precedent on this? Yeah, so Roberts was trying to be really slippery by saying, well, chief justices don't appear before Congress to testify. That's true. Other Supreme Court justices appear before Congress to testify, including justices that have been on the Roberts Court while Roberts was on it. All right. So, like, the idea that justices never testify before Congress is just bunk. And it's that classic kind of lawyer trick that Roberts is trying to pull a fast one because he thinks he's smarter than everybody else and doesn't realize that people can see what he's doing. Right. But to the larger issue that you're getting at, Katie, I think that the, the fundamental problem with this hearing as it has been allegedly constructed by Dick mm. Durbin is the idea that this is to figure out whether or not we need to ask the Supreme Court to apply its own ethical standards to itself, where Durbin wants to ask the Supreme Court to police itself, which is ridiculous. The, the Supreme Court cannot police itself. It's proven that it can't police itself. Asking it super nicely, oh, John, would you please police yourself now, is dumb. All right. What needs to happen is not asking the Supreme Court to police itself. We need to have congressional legislation to police the Supreme Court. Right. And that's not apparently what this hearing is all about. And so that's why I don't think that the that the invitation was ever going to go anywhere. Of course, Roberts doesn't want to want to show up like it's the kind of thing where like if you if you ask a high school football player who just, you know, uh, uh, just just got accepted to Texas A&M. Hey, buddy, you want to tell me about your new car? What is he going to say? No, I'm good, son. I don't, don't want to talk about my new car today. Right? And that's what Roberts is right now. He doesn't want to talk about his wife. He doesn't want to talk about his friends. He doesn't want to talk about Harlan Crow. He doesn't want to talk about land deals and book deals. And he doesn't want to talk about it. And no one's going to make him. So why would he? Like, that, so that's, that's what happens when you let these people police themselves. They just don't. Okay, so let's talk about the timing in the grand scheme. Justice Gorsuch, for example, facing scrutiny of his own with new reporting that he didn't disclose the buyer of the property that he co-owned days after his confirmation. Turns out that buyer was a lawyer whose law firm had, quote, robust business before the court in at least 22 cases since that deal. I mean, Ellie, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. 
listen, that's been around <laughs> for years. You can't believe that this just sprang forth in just a few years. So why the heightened scrutiny, no pun intended, why the heightened scrutiny now? The thing about Gorsuch is funny is that he listed who gave him other gifts, right? So he knew that <laughs> he knew how to fill out the form. He put other people's names down, but this land deal, no, 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 because he didn't want to put that name down, right? So Gorsuch knows that he's full of it, and and, and I think everybody does. But the, the why is this happening now is the interesting question, right, Katie? Mm -hmm. It's happening now because somebody decided to look. Again, it's just proof that the Supreme Court can't do it themselves. We're only doing this now because ProPublica decided to look. And this is what they found. And so now other journalists are deciding to look. And you know, by the way, Katie, that if they find that Sonia Sotomayor, you know, got a bottle of nail polish from Revlon, you know that's coming out on the Wall Street Journal front page, right? Like, you know that there are people who are looking now because the Supreme Court has not been doing the job. So it's all coming out now because somebody is bothering to look. Who should that embarrass? Congress, which was the body that was supposed to have oversight over these people. If the Supreme Court will not have oversight over itself and Congress will not take oversight over the Supreme Court, th then who? Then we really are in a world where like, well, I hope ProPublica Pro cares because if not, we'll never know. Like that's, that's the world we live in, right? So that's why it's all happening now. It's not that there's, I don't think there's a, there's a rash or an epidemic of self-dealing. I think this is the self-dealing that's gone on all along. And it's just now that people are bothering to look.